Hi everyone, here's our next instalment of Wonder by RJ Palaccio. The Egyptian Tomb Over the next month, August and I hung out a lot after school, either at his house or mine, or my house. August's parents even invited Mum and me over for dinner a couple of times. I overheard them talking about fixing Mum up on a blind date with August's Uncle Ben. On the day of the Egyptian Museum exhibit, we were all really excited and kind of giddy. It had snowed the day before. Not as much as it had snowed over the Thanksgiving break, but still, snow is snow. The gym was tuned into a giant museum was turned into a giant museum, which everyone's Egyptian artifact displayed on a table with a little caption card explaining what the thing was. Most of the artifacts were really great, but I have to say, I really think mine and August's were the best. My sculpture of Anubis looked, re looked pretty real, and I had even used real gold paint on it. And August had made his step pyramid out of sugar cubes, it was two feet high and two feet long, and he had spray painted the cubes with a kind of fake sand paint or something. It looked so awesome. We all dressed up in Egyptian costumes. Some of the kids were Indiana Jones type archaeologists. Some of them dressed up like pharaohs. August and I dressed up like mummies. Our faces were covered except for two little eye holes for the eyes, and one little hole for the mouth. When the parents showed up, they all lined up in the hallway in front of the gym. Then we were told we could go get our, our parents, and each kid got to take his or her parents on a flashlight tour of Through the Dark Gym. August and I took our mums around together. We stopped at each exhibit explaining what it was, talking in whispers, answering questions. Since it was dark, we used our flashlights to illuminate the artifacts, which were talking. Sometimes, for dramatic effect, we would hold the flashlight under our chins while we were explaining something in detail. It was so much fun, hearing all these kids whisper, these whispers in the dark, seeing all the lights zigzagging around the dark room. At one point, I went over to get a drink at the water fountain. I had to take the mummy wrap off my face. Hey, Summer, said Jack, who came over to talk to me. He was dressed like the man from the mummy. Cool costume. Thanks. Is the other mummy August? Yeah. Uh, hey, do you know why August is mad at me? Uh-huh. I nodded. Can you tell me? No. He nodded. He seemed bummed. I told him I wouldn't tell you, I explained. It's so weird, he said. I have no idea why he's mad at me all of a sudden. None. Can't you at least give me a hint? I looked over at where August was across the room, talking to our mums. I wasn't about to break my solid oath that I wouldn't tell anyone about what he overheard at Halloween, but I felt bad for Jack. Bleeding scream, I whispered in his ear, and then walked away. Part four, Jack. Now here is my secret. It is very simple. It is only with one's heart that one can see clearly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Antoine de saint Exupéry, The Little Prince. The call. So in August, my, my parents got this call from Mr. Tushman, the middle school director, and my mum said, maybe he calls all the new students to welcome them. And my dad said, that's a lot of kids he'd be calling. So my mum called him back, and I could hear her talking to Mr. Tushman on the phone. This is exactly what she said. Oh, hi, Mr. Tushman. This is Amanda Will returning your call. Uh, oh, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. He's looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah? Oh, sure. 
Oh. Uh-huh. Well, that's so nice of you to say. Sure. Oh. Wow. Oh. I see, of course. I'm sure he will. Let me write it down. Got it. I'll call you after I've had a chance to talk to him, okay? No, thank you for thinking of him. Bye-bye. And when she hung up, I was like, What's up? What did he say? And Mum said, Well, it's actually very flattering, but kind of sad too. See, there's this boy who's starting middle school this year, and he's never been in a real school environment before because he was homeschooled. So Mr Tushman talked to some of the lower school teachers to find out who they thought uh, were some of the really, really great kids coming into the fifth grade. And the teachers must have told him you were especially uh, an especially nice kid, which I already knew, of course. And so Mr. Tushman is wondering if you if he could count on you to sort to sort of shepherd this new boy around a bit. Like let him hang out with me, I said. Exactly, said Mum. He called it being a welcome buddy. But why me? I told you, your teachers told Mr. Tushman that you were the kind of kid who's known for being a good egg. I mean, I'm so proud that they think so highly of you. Why is it sad? What do you mean? You said it's flattering, but kind of sad too. Oh, Mum nodded. Well, apparently this boy has some sort of, um, I guess there's something wrong with his face or something like that. Not sure. Maybe he was in an accident. Mr. Tushman said he'd explain a bit more when you come to the school next week. School doesn't start until September. He wants you to meet this kid before school starts. Do I have to? Mum looked a bit surprised. Well, no, of, of course not, she said. But it would be a nice thing to do, Jack, if I don't have to do it. I said, I don't want to do it. Can you at least think about it? I'm thinking about it and I don't want to do it. Well, I'm not going to force you, she said, but at least think about it some more, okay? I'm not calling Mr. Tushman back until tomorrow, so just sit with it a bit. I mean, Jack, I really don't think it's much to ask that you spend a little extra time with some, with an, some new kid. It's not just that he's a new kid, Mum, I answered. He's deformed. That's a terrible thing to say, Jack. He is, Mum. You don't even know who it is. Yeah, I do, I said, because I knew the second she started talking about him that it was that kid named August. Carvel. I remember seeing him for the first time in the front of the front of the Carvel on Amsford Avenue when I was about five or six. Me and Veronica, my babysitter, were sitting on the bench outside the store with Jamie, my baby brother, who was sitting in his stroller facing us. I guess I was busy eating my ice cream cone because I didn't even notice the people who sat down next to us. Then at one point I turned my head to suck the ice cream out of the bottom of the cone, and that's when I saw him. August. He was sitting right next to me. I knew it wasn't cool, but I kind of went, ah, when I saw him, because I honestly got scared. I thought he was wearing a zombie mask or something. It was a kind of, ah, when you say when you're watching a, a scary movie, the bad guy, like, jumps out of the bushes. Anyway, I know it wasn't nice of me to do that, and though the kid didn't hear me, I know his sister did. Jack, we have to go, said Veronica. She had gotten up and was turning the stroller around because Jamie, who had obviously just noticed the kid too, was about to say something embarrassing. So I jumped up, so I jumped up kind of suddenly, like a bee had landing on, landed on me, and followed Veronica as she zoomed away. 
I could hear the kid mum saying softly behind us. Okay, guys, I think it's time to go. And I turned around to look at them one more time. The kid was licking his ice cream cone. The mum was picking up his scooter. And the sister was glaring at me like she was going to kill me. I looked away quickly. Veronica, what was wrong with that kid? I whispered. Hush, boy, she said, her voice angry. I love Veronica, but she got mad. She got mad. Meanwhile, Jamie was practically spilling out of his stroller, trying to get another look at Veronica as Veronica pushed him away. But, Veronica, said Jamie, you boys were very naughty, very naughty, said Veronica. As soon as we were farther down the block, staring like that. I didn't mean to, I said. Veronica, said Jamie. Us leaving like that, Veronica was muttering. Oh, Lord, that poor lady, I tell you boys, every day we should thank the Lord for our blessings. You hear me? Veronica! What is it, Jamie? Is it Halloween? No, Jamie. Then what was the boy wearing? Wearing a mask? Veronica didn't answer. Sometimes, when he was mad about something, she would do that. He wasn't wearing a mask, I explained to Jamie. Hush, Jack, said Veronica. Why are you so mad, Veronica? I couldn't help asking. I thought this would make her this would make her angrier, but actually she shook her head. It was bad how we did that, she said, just getting up like that, like we'd seen the devil. I was scared for a while, Jamie was going to say, you know, I don't want him to say anything that would hurt the little boy's feelings. But it was very bad of us leaving like that. The mama knew what was going on. But we didn't mean it, I answered. Jack, sometimes you don't have to mean to hurt someone to hurt someone. You understand? That was the first time I ever saw August in the neighbourhood. At least that I remember. But I've seen him around ever since then, a couple of times in the playground, a few times in the park. He used to wear an astronaut helmet sometimes, but I always knew it was him underneath the helmet. All the kids in the neighbourhood knew it was him. Everyone has seen August at some point or another. We all know his name, though he doesn't know ours. And whenever I've seen him, I try to remember what Veronica said, but it's hard. It's hard not to sneak a second look. It's hard to act normal when you see him.